another edition of Authentic Church with Friends. Develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Hey, why only survive when you can learn to thrive? But anyway, when it happened, God said, okay, now, Eva, you are the one who knows the devil. You talk to the devil and you exchanged words. Therefore, I have put a battle between you and the devil. Please get up and fight the devil. Let me tell you women, unless you get up and fight the serpent, unless you yourselves fight the devil, the devil is consuming us. And I want to tell you, you have no capacity or ability to fight the devil unless you receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Because he's the one who defeated the devil on the cross. It's Jesus only who knows how to defeat the devil. And therefore, when he's within you, but hey, if the one in you is greater yeah. than the one in the world, can't you balance your marriage and balance your public life and move on? Amen. You can. Oh, thank you so much, Honorable. Uh, I'm going to ask two more questions and then we'll open it to the audience. Uh, while I was reading your book, you referred to... Uh, Which one? Which one? I have many books. The recent launched one. Have you read this one? Yes, I have. Hey, <laughs> this is the book. Yes. This is the one advertising so it in case you, you need it, you'll see us after here. <laughs> yes. Uh, you referred to yeah, J John Maxwell's uh, statement. Uh, he said, a great leader's courage to fulfill his or her vision comes from passion, not position. Please, would you uh, address how we can actually influence and lead and without waiting for positions? Mm. As Maxwell put it, that a leader's courage to pursue her vision or her passion, her vision, her goal, does not depend on the position she's holding, but it depends on the passion. And I, I entirely agree with Maxwell, because I used to have positions, you have heard about them. Yes. Since 13 years ago, I don't hold any position. Position meaning that you are in office, member of parliament, you are a lecturer, you are what? No. I hold no position at all. I finished in 2006, and up to now, I live as an ordinary individual. But I have not stopped to run with my passion. My passion for gender equality and women's empowerment. I don't need any office. When you are calling me here, you called Miriam Atembe. You didn't put there over what or what because there is no what. You could have put child of God if you wanted. <laughs> but usually they never put that. But you, because, let me tell you, when you are driven by your passion, to follow your vision. Even when you don't hold any office, you still have the vision. So those people who come to you for you to work on your vision, they come to you because you have the vision. Mm -hmm. And that's why a vision is really, really important. If you are driven by an ambition, the moment you wanted to be a member of parliament and you became a member of parliament and you finished and got out, that is the end. Mm -hmm. If I were to ask you people, when I got from parliament in 2006, there were very many women colleagues of mine. Do you know them? How many of them, if you were to reflect, I wonder how many of them you know. But everybody knows me. You may not have seen me, but you know yes. me. You hear the name, you see the <laughs> news, you see the newspaper, you see, and what is driving me? My passion for my vision. But the others, even those who left just when was it? 2000 and when? 16. Mm -hmm. The last elections were what? Yeah, 2016. For you to remember, if I were to ask you, ever since I left Mbarara, do you know the woman representative from Barara? Have you ever heard of any? Do you know? Have you ever heard another name? And those are how many? F three terms. 
you don't hear anybody. Mm-hmm. Do you see why people should be driven by visions? Yes. Because when it is a vision, it does not matter. And that's why I tell you, in leadership, by the way, we are all born leaders. You can go and argue about that. But the scripture tells me, Genesis chapter 1, it says that, of course, when God created man, he had wanted to give him assignment. One of them was to be a leader, to rule over his creation. But man was not able to, he, saw, he looked at man and said, ah, he's not able. Let me first improve him. So <laughs> he said, let me create a suitable helper. So he created Eva as a suitable helper for Adam. And then after creating Eva, and Adam smiled, in other words, life entered Adam. And everything was good. God said, he told Adam and Eve, both of them, he said, go and multiply to subdue the world, rule everything. So just at creation, everybody of us became what? A leader. <laughs> Everybody became a leader at creation. Mm. Well, you may tell me down the road, after eating the fruit, eh? mm. God told Adam, you will rule. Three things happened after eating the fruit. The relationship between God and man fell. And man became subjected to the devil. Originally, man was over the devil. Mm. Two, the relationship between a woman and man fell, and the woman was subjected to the man. Okay? So now the man rules the woman, and the man, the devil rules the man, and the man rules the woman under the foreign status. That's why you people, you must run away out of the foreign status. It is very dangerous. Under the foreign status, the devil rules the man, man rules the woman. So if you are ruled by money, who is ruled over the devil, will you fight the devil? No. Can you money? So what does this mean? You have to get Jesus. When you, when you are born again, that's what it means to be born again. You are reinstated to the original position where Adam and Eve were. You get it? Mm. So you, you are now ruling. So it, the devil goes, is under your foot, man and woman are equal, you rule the world, and you move on. Yeah. Therefore, you rule, you are all rulers, and in whichever, whether at the village level, whether in the home, whether, but as you rule, what drives you? You must yes. be driven by a vision. A vision means what you do for the benefit of others. And when wow. you do that, God rewards you immensely. Wow. Thank you so much, Honorable. Uh, actually, talking about men and women, yes, uh, or being leaders, have you faced resistance leading men, and how do you deal with it, just in case? What? What is have you met resistance while leading men? I'm a leader. I don't lead yeah. men only. But yes, maybe what, what she's saying is when the battle for gender equality and women's empowerment came up, Oh my God, it was like hell has broken loose. It was tough. It was tough if you read my book in the first book I wrote, my autobiography, which is uh, Gender, Women and Constitution Making in Uganda, you'll see what I'm telling my story. You see, for the first time, and I'm not saying I was the first person to fight against these things, but you can imagine if you have lived with a dream from childhood until I think I was 30, 33, <laughs> I think, when the NRIM came in. It was like when you open a, a, a door for a dog which bites people and you open the cage like this. Ooh. I got out and I was unstoppable. I had not learned about anything, over gender, over chi. All I knew was that women should not be treated like that. Mm. So I went out like what I was saying, the unsaid, the unspoken 
kende what it was <laughs> it was no joke but i was extremely unstoppable unstoppable and so by now we have really fought against those things. people hated me some of them actually that woman they would describe me with so many many terrible words and by the way even now people people still say eh, if they meet you talk you say eh, you mean you know that it's like an animal but to me i will give you an example which you really which made me which made me hurt but that god gave me right words when i was going to to marry my son's wife my son a wife yeah there was this man who used to be you know those days in politics we used to have battles of catholic and protestants mm. so in barara the catholic would gang up against me but because i was doing very well i would certainly break i would get the many catholics and protestants and so on and this was a man who was a relative of my my your, the family of your daughter in of my daughter era when i learned that he was a relative because we are going to marry catholic <laughs> and this catholic was a niece to this man who used to really fight me so when i learned that he was actually <laughs> he was the one i told the girl you know you better take stand your ground if he says anything you stand your ground so now i <laughs> i collaborate with my, my daughter in love to stand the ground and object to that man so anyway eventually of course they couldn't do otherwise this man found me now i'm the in law now i'm here this side and the other side imagine on on kuhinjera on kuhinjera handing over their daughter to us this man said for us we don't know we don't know Matembe, Mr. Matembe, we don't, we didn't know him. I'm only seeing him today. For us, we only know that the wife, Miria, whom we know, we know her as a lion. Can you imagine? Can you imagine on Kinjira, your daughter, you know me as a lion? As if like her, our daughter is in trouble. She's going to be eaten by a lion. <laughs> and you know, when I went to give my speech, I said, yes, actually, it's good you know me as a lion. And you know, I'm going to protect this cow. <laughs> so I'm going to protect the lion protects this cow. Can we have some questions? If you're ready with your question, please. My name is Kara Tabla. My question is, after pursuing your dreams and everything, what's your current relationship with your parents? How did your, okay, my direct thing would be like, how is your current relationship with your dad? How did, if I want to pursue my dream, and it's, uh, you know how parents have, a, they have a path they want their kids to take. So if I want to do me, how do I bring in my dad to accept what I want to do, or if he refuses, how do I do me minus going against him? I would like to know how you, as a woman of vision in, a, in government, how do you protect yourself from being corrupted and uh, being diverted from, uh, from your vision? As we, we all know, it's public information that uh, politics is somehow a dirty game. Thank you. I'm called Alison Kantarama. I worship here at the worship house with uh, Pastor Wilson Bugembe. I work with the protocol department. I also work at Mlago National Referral Hospital as the assistant commissioner support services. Honorable Dr. Miriam Matembe, I want to uh, add to you to add voice to experiences that I have observed uh, that sometimes the gender concern seems to paint the divide, male versus female. Have you come across what looks like a pull down from fellow ladies? And this, for me as a woman, I'm not so much of a feminist, but I love fairness and justice. And as a born again Christian, I, I agitate for 
humanity to move ahead in quality that God predestinated for us. But uh, I have this observation that sometimes a lot of opportunity is wasted uh, because of women bickering against women and uh, intrigue and some of those things that bring down a wasted effort in terms of opportunity uh, stock building. Uh, men do it. Women do it. So I like the way you started. The foundation is Christ. When we are in Christ, sometimes I, I, I understand that gives us the greater focus that men can undermine women, they also can undermine men. But I wanted uh, us to draw the strength from the focus of the vision to do what is right. And uh, the, the history you shared as a growing up girl child, I'm also born in a family of six boys and four girls, and I have a lot of shared uh, similarity with what you have explained. But I still find that a woman can be as dangerous uh, and, uh, and uh, bring down society. They may not because there is an upper hand in God and in those who maintain the focus. So that was my take on that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Winnie Sayuni. And uh, I feel like when you gave me a book to read, I read a lot of scriptures. There was that part that has uh, you living your life called a former. And I see a lot of scripture, and I'm wondering, this person knows God, and they're also politicians. I feel like a lot of us who are in church are praying for people, for, uh, we are praying to God to use certain people, but we are in church praying, just praying. So I just want you to help the young people to know, um, I don't know, to know how they can actually be Christians Conk Christians, but they are also serving God because I know that the Bible tells us that if the righteous are in authority, people rejoice. But all of us are in one corner in churches praying that the Lord can use certain people. I don't know which people we want God to use, but the Lord is calling us to actually go and serve. So I would just love you to help the young people here who would love to be politicians, but they feel like politics is a dirty game, yet they are Christians and the Lord wants them to go and serve in those places. My name is Florence and I fellowship from here. Uh, my, uh, what I want to ask is that um, we see so many um, women parliamentarians and MPs, but uh, uh, from the, like, I've been watching and I've been seeing and reading things, but uh, I've not seen anyone passionate about raising up other women in the parliament right now. Everyone, like, uh, I don't know even how they got there, but I don't see anyone passionate about, like, fighting for the women's rights as of now, and I've been watching it for some time. My question is, um, you being passionate as you are, what have you done to raise other people? Because I, some people need to be pushed because they are scared, they don't know anyone, you don't have any connections, but you would want, you have this, you have your voice and you want your voice to be heard. And there are so many people you can speak for. Like we hear like uh, human trafficking, many people are being taken out and mostly they are girls and women, but uh, even the people we have there are not even talking about it things come up and uh, they just get lost and no one has spoken about them but uh, people are crying and women are really crying and no one is speaking up for them and whoever is there representing us is not doing anything so how can we go about that and how can you raise a team or an army of women that is going to stand for the women that are voiceless out there and also my question because I know after you finish you will be closing I would like you to uh, what would you want your legacy to be? Okay, relationship. With your parents, my dad is already dead. But of course my dad, I resisted my dad all the time. But I did not become a rebel. I resist. Like for instance, when he said you are not going to study law. It was not his fault. Girls were not studying law. When I said, what about medicine? He said, no, my dead body. Oh, you can't. He said, I will even ostracize you. Go and study nursing or teaching. Now I told him, okay, I am not the one. 
who called myself study law. It is the Makerere <laughs> vice chancellor. Moreover, headmaster. Because you think my father knew a vice chancellor. I said, you got the headmaster at Makerere. <laughs> and tell him that you don't want your daughter to study law. And poor man did not do what? Did not know Makerere. So, and I was not ready to take him there <laughs> to kill my dream. I took my mother to education office and to promote my dream. Wow. But I could not take my father to Makerere to do what? To kill my dream. So he couldn't. So he let me alone. And after studying the law, ha, the man was happy, the man was excited, the man, hey, hey, my lawyer, come here and be a judge. He thought I would be a judge. <laughs> so he was proud of me. <laughs> when it came to marrying, he resisted, resisted until I, I told him I'm not going to marry anymore. And you know those days, if you, you are not married, it is like a, eh? taboo. And if you marry a wrong person also, it's an evil also. So you have to choose which is the best of the evils. So when I said I'm not going to marry, he weighed and said, hey, a girl in the home here. Oh, those are things which you have fought now. They, they no longer matter. A girl unmarried in this home. Ah, you'd rather marry a wrong man, a, a man whom I don't agree with. So he called the meeting of the clan and we all put forward our stories. <laughs> then the clan ruled in my favor. <laughs> so you can see I won without being what you call rebellious. So you need wisdom. You need wisdom. You can call your dad, talk to him if he refuses. You call uncle, you call the teachers. You, know. you can use wisdom because let me tell you, parents on this earth are your God. We are the God of our children, although there is the other God who gave them to us, but he lent them to us. Here on earth, we are like the God taking care, and you don't rebel. You, you convince, you do what? Eventually, with God, if that is the purpose God wants you to pursue, God will make a way. Don't think that these things of God will make a way is a lie. It is not just a song. God makes a way where there is no way. He does. So if you are focusing, I'm glad. I'm, when I'm talking to Christians, I even talk much better. Because I know they believe and they know what I'm talking about. If that is God's purpose for you, God will maneuver. I tell you, God knows how to engineer. He may not maneuver because God, I think, doesn't maneuver. But he engineers. He engineers the situation and it comes out right. We must finish. <laughs> corruption and politics, that's a game. Yes. I can't protect corruption. I would rather lose the job. It says in the scripture, don't go with the crowd. Don't go with the crowd. Do you know Zacchaeus? You remember that man, Zacchaeus? The, the scripture says that Zacchaeus was short. And he could not see Jesus. What prevented Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus? Eh? He was short. When I ask people, they say Zacchaeus was short. If Zacchaeus was short and people were not there, he could have seen Jesus. But Zacchaeus was short and the crowd prevented him. You should read the Bible properly. Zacchaeus was short and the crowd prevented him from seeing Jesus. Get out of the crowd. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. Can you imagine he ended up hosting Jesus in his home? When you get out of the crowd, you will get more. Yeah. Jesus, God will protect in that fragile situation and you will get more. Rather than being swallowed by what? By the crowd. By the crowd. By the crowd. Many people tell me, but that's what others do. But that's, I say, I, Miriam, Matembe, Korung, I am not others. I am not. I am myself. Politics are dirty, indeed they are dirty, but then if they are dirty, who is going to clean them? 
By the way, they are not dirty. It is the people who play them that are dirty. Yes. The, the women, they are not talking for others. And then you asked me, why, why am I mentoring? I have mentored women to come after me. I have mentored even up to now, I'm mentoring. Even you now, I have mentored you. <laughs> I keep training young women, but I tell you, the environment has become so bad that even our women whom have trained and have gone to parliament, they've been swallowed there. And it is not women alone, by the way. It should not be the women alone to fight against the slave trade. When the slave trade came, I stood up and shouted and talked and condemned the whole agreement with the ministry, but I'm one voice, and the women NGO talked, but we don't have power. It is so sad to see our children being tortured in, in, by Arabs who think we are not human beings. It is so sad, it is so painful that we sit and keep quiet and we struggle for our stomachs. Everybody's concerned is about what I eat tomorrow. Eh? We can even starve ourselves and say we are not eating until something is done. But if it is for my stomach, for myself, for I, this is why we are having all this. Because so women in parliament, even if they talk to themselves alone, I don't think they would achieve so much. But anyway, in conclusion, gender, some, she told me that women can be dangerous. <laughs> you didn't know that, that's a fact. <laughs> oh <God. laughs> they are very dangerous. Don't you know what that woman did to Samson? <laughs> eh? What did Delilah do to Samson? They are dangerous. Even Eva himself, she brought that fruit and the death came. Women are dangerous. They can be dangerous as much as men are dangerous. But what I don't agree with is when this tribalization, this, whenever you say women in work, women, the issue is, Women are enemies of themselves. They have poor her syndrome. They fight one another. First of all, why shouldn't women fight one another? Because women have been socialized and nurtured to fight one another competing for men. Isn't it so? Isn't it how they formalize and socialize us? Yeah. All the time you want to be the beautiful, you want to be the best, you want to be, because you want to attract a man. Eh? Don't you agree? Yeah. So it begins with this whole perception of women living for men. That women have got to live for men, and therefore they've got to fight one another, be jealous, be worth of one another, in order to win men. And one of the strategies in our battles is to fight that to fight that socialization, to bring up a woman as a woman in her own right, standing up, not having to depend on a man, and therefore not fighting for men. Eh? So that socialization causes the problem. So you need to re the socialization there is a need for the socialization for women to see, yes, we are also human beings, we are leaders, we can lead. Now finally, what is my legacy? I do believe that I have a legacy. I do believe that even when I die, my soul will remain, my spirit, my spirit for gender equality and women's empowerment will not die, will not die, it will remain. If you know how many Matembe's are in this country, whether to whichever level, whichever level, Matembe, Matembe, they are there. Oh, amen. Because Matembeism <laughs> is there and it will not stop. Now, how do I want to be remembered for us? I want to be remembered as a daughter of God who made a difference in women's lives. That one will be enough for me. Hi, 
Hello, it's yet another edition of Authentic Chat with Friends. Develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Hey, why only survive when you can learn to thrive? Seeking faith and speaking.